Welcome back everyone to another NASCAR Heat Evolution setup video. In this video, we're going to be taking on Dover. And if you haven't already raced at Dover, let me tell you, this place is a beast to run. And the name of the game around this place is to try to keep the car under control. So let's go ahead and get into the lap times. Then I want to jump in a little bit more into how to drive this place and how to tackle this monster. First and foremost, the AI at max difficulty or 105% will qualify on the pole at about a 23 second flat lap or 23.0 seconds. Now you're going to see at the very end of this video, a couple of laps that I ran uh, for example purposes. And the great thing about these laps is these are not perfect laps. I want to make that clear from the beginning. And the reason why I'm so proud of that, when you would think, why wouldn't you record perfect laps for us? The reason is these lap times are at 23.1 second range. One of them is 23.14. The other is 23.198. So the reason I'm doing this is to show you that these laps are very close to the pole in and of themselves, but they're not perfect laps. I wasn't right on the bottom. I, you know, I didn't make perfect entries and perfect exits and all that kind of thing. And yet I was still able to go fast and keep the car under control. That's the main thing. So before we get into the setup itself with these lap time information out of the way, let's talk about how to tackle this monster. Dover is fast. You're going to sp be spending a ton of time on the throttle. The main things to keep in mind here are get off the throttle early on corner entry. Okay, you'll see as you approach the corner on the outside fencing, the catch fencing, you'll see cones, a series. First, you'll see three cones, then you'll see two, and then finally one as you enter the corner. I would definitely recommend that you don't enter the corner or don't lift off the gas into the corner any later than cone number two. Now, obviously, there are, are many different ways of running a track, but the way I'm going to give you is not using the brake, simply lifting off the gas completely and letting the car settle into the corner, then get back onto the throttle. So if you want to run that way, I would recommend getting off the gas no later than the second cone as a marker. Now, obviously, if you want to get off a little bit earlier, that's fine. It may enable you to get back to the gas a little bit earlier. If you get off any later, you'll find that the car will generally push up the track, hurting your lap time and hurting your speed. So try to get off the gas early. You won't be off the gas long, as you'll hear in the example laps that we'll be playing a little bit later. So you get off the gas completely, going into the corner about the second cone, be off the gas very small amount of time. Then you're gonna get back into the gas hard, and then you've got one of two options on corner exit. Now, with this setup, it will be possible to maintain that once you get back to the throttle, to keep in the throttle full blast all the way off the corner. Okay, but another option that you'll have that really uh, doesn't seem to hurt your lap time, in fact, it may even help your lap time a little bit, is to get back on the gas hard and then lift about half throttle about just before corner exit and then get back in the gas hard. What that does is lifting off the gas that little bit enables the car to rotate and sort of settle itself down. One thing you'll find at Dover, because everything is high banked, the corners are high banked, the straightaway is high banked, that you're carrying so much speed that it's very easy to push off the corners and actually hit the outside wall on corner exit. It creeps up on you very quickly. So one way you can guard against that is to just breathe the throttle a little bit on corner exit as the car is continuing to rotate, and that will help settle the car down some. So keep that in mind. It's not something you have to do. But you're some, it's something you're going to hear me do uh, in a couple of the corners during the example laps. And I did that on purpose so you guys can hear that in one case, I lifted more toward the center of the corner. So it was sort of like I'm, I go into the corner, I'm completely off the gas, then I get right back on it, and then I lift again, and then right back on it hard again. And then a couple of other corners I just took flat out uh, as I normally would once I get back to the gas. So keep those things in mind. Uh, don't feel like you have to be stuck to a particular line or a particular way of driving. Some people might want to drive into the corner harder and use a lot more brake on corner entry. That's perfectly fine. Everybody has their own different way of driving it. I'm trying to offer you what I believe is the most 
simple way of doing it, which is not using the brake and not trying to time anything other than when you're on and off the gas. So with that being said, let's move on to the setup itself. First and foremost, the shocks didn't mess with them. Okay, I kept my standard uh, tens across the board. Feel free to adjust these. Moving on to the weight settings. The left side weight is maxed out as always at 54.2% because this is an oval when we're turning left all the time. Front weight, I finally decided on 50.2%. Now, stable. I know you guys who have watched multiple setup videos of mine, I keep saying keeping the car stable. I keep mentioning that over and over, and you're going to hear it more in this particular video because that's what I focus on. The car is no good to me if it's fast for one or two laps, but I can't control it in traffic. So the front weight, I could reduce it even further, and that would help the car to rotate, but I found that it makes the car much more out of control if I try to push the car. So I decided on 50.2%. Uh, wedge is at 50% even. Again, this is to help the car rotate. In this, on this track, as I've mentioned uh, a few times before already, you're going to be on the gas so hard and so often that you need the car to rotate very quickly. This is only a one mile track and you're going to be getting around it in about 23 seconds. So it doesn't take long and you need the car to rotate, but you also need it to be stable. So I decided on 50%. If the car doesn't rotate quite quickly enough for you, then you can decrease that wedge number. If the car is over rotating on you and the car is really getting loose, then try increasing that number. Front and rear ride heights have not been touched. They stay at the minimum of four inches each. Moving on to the springs, you can see my standard front spring set works well here at 1200 pounds, which is the max left front spring and a 1000 pound right front spring. Again, I, don't, I like to use some split between the, the front springs in order to help the car turn, but I don't want to use too much because it can cause the car to become unstable. There's that word again. So moving on to the rear, I finally decided on 400 pounds for the left rear and 500 in the right rear. Now you'll notice that's a combination I've used in several other setups, but in this case, I actually didn't go to that uh, particular split until the very last. I tried much more split in the rear of the car because I knew I needed the car to rotate. The problem I had with using more split was the car kept getting loose, really loose on corner exit. I could still get the lap time. I could still get 23 ones and twos. That wasn't the problem, but it wasn't as stable as I needed it to be. And I felt like I was turning to the right way too much coming off the corner. So I decided to increase the left rear spring to 400 pounds as I had been using anything from you know, 300 to three and a quarter, 350, somewhere in that range, finally decided on the 400 because it keeps the car more under control. Tire pressure is key at this particular track. Uh, and in particular within that is the split. I chose 20 pounds for the left sides, 35 pounds for the right sides. And the 15 pounds of split between left and right is crucial because the more split you have, the better the car will rotate through the corner. Okay, so keep that in mind. More split equals more rotation through the corner. So if the car seems a little bit too loose overall, so it's getting too loose on entry, too loose in the middle, and too loose on exit for you, try decreasing the right side pressures to 30 or maybe even 25. Okay, the less split you run, the more stable the car will feel, but of course it will also make it tighter. So keep that in mind. Moving on to the miscellaneous settings of camber. Left front and right front camber remains maxed out. I've not seen really a, a reason to reduce this also although if you're having trouble with the car pulling way too hard to the left on the straightaways or if the car feels like it's just unstable to you by all means reduce these numbers reduce the left front and right front camber say by half and see if that really helps with the stability of the car you'll probably be giving up a little bit of speed but who knows if if you have to sacrifice a little bit of speed for increased stability it may be worth it for you so keep that in mind the front sway bar number is at one and a half. Uh, again, reduce that number if you feel like the car is not rotating enough for you, particularly on uh, corner entry. Increase this particular number if you feel like the car is rotating too much. So you've got options here on how to adjust the car if it's too loose or too tight for you. We're not using the rear sway bar. We'll move on to the track bar. And you can see there's a slight negative split here of half of an inch. 
The reason I did this a little bit higher on the left side than right side is because I needed the help on corner entry, making sure the car could turn and I could get the car to the bottom of the track when I needed to uh, and, and maintain it there. Well, that's what the 11 inches is for on the left side. That helps me get into the corner nice and hard while also uh, maintaining a good rotating car. The right side is a little bit lower because I wanted to keep the car from getting too loose on corner exit. The last thing I want to do is come off the corner doing 160, 170 miles an hour and have to be turning hard to the right to overcorrect for uh, the car getting loose. So I decided to reduce that number to 10 and a half on the right side. So if, if you're too loose on corner entry, reduce the left side track bar. If you're too loose on corner exit, reduce the right side. That's generally the way I, I view it. Entry is left side, exit is right side. And you try to keep the split within a couple of inches. Generally, you're going to be fine. Uh, just keep in mind that the more, uh, the higher the left side is over the right side, the tighter the car will be from the middle of the corner off. Brake bias, don't use it uh, at this particular track until, until it's time to pit, of course. Uh, so I left it at 72%, which seems to work pretty good for me, uh, keeping the car from getting loose under heavy braking. Grill tape, not using it there. And wheel lock, haven't touched it. Steering offset, I've used what has become my new standard of 0 0.125. That's about the maximum setting I feel like I can use to keep the car from wanting to turn to the right on the straightaway. So if you're having tr still having trouble with the car, pulling really hard to the left on the straightaway, I would work on reducing the, the camber for the left front and right front, and also adjust the steering offset. Increase this number if the car is pulling too hard to the left. Something to keep in mind. Moving on finally to the gear settings. I did not touch, touch first through fourth. I went straight to the rear end ratio, and it is at 3.6. Now, this is important because this is the one track uh, for those of you who have watched multiple of these videos that I've done. Normally, I assign a rear end ratio that will max out the RPMs right around 9,000 or just above at the end of the straightaway. I did not do that with Dover because I wanted to leave a little bit of room there uh, because it the torque from the engine really can get the car loose at this track, so I backed off of that number. I think originally I could have gotten it up around 3.75, I believe, somewhere in that neighborhood, and really maxed out the RPMs, but I backed off of that to save a little RPM and to help the car with stability as I'm on and off the gas. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. Feel free to leave uh, comments and suggestions down below and stay tuned for a couple of laps around Dover.